I don't know if you guys are still with us, but can you confirm if you can hear us or not? Would be very, very appreciated. Well, it'd be appreciated by Ali. It would be. I feel. I'm pretty uh, indifferent about it. That, that might be working. Yes, we can. Oh my god, we have contact. Sorry, guys. Um, We're back. I really, really. Sucked I don't know in. what you happened. You tried to take us off air, Miss Love. <laughs> yeah, that was entirely his fault. He's been watching maths in the computer, and it's completely ruined our, uh, shall we say, extremely professional setup. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just another reason why Miss Love Balabranji is not here. And we, is a psychic. Hmm? He sabotaged it. Anyways, they'll find out why. Find out why what? Are we in the real podcast now? I, I don't know what be. this is anymore. Uh, I think we might are. have to be. So, um, and there's a whopping 85 people watching wow. us now. That's um, average Australian Twitch streaming numbers. Okay. Worse That's than a that. nice feeling. I've got to say, I do feel good about the fact that we have... Average Australian Twitch stream and numbers when all they were listening to was annoying technical feedback for half an hour. It does make me feel good that there have been people that have been working for years to get to that number. And may I just say, I hope that all of your fruits of labor are fruitless. You have lost again. We are now at 102, so we have surpassed the average stream. <laughs> yes! again. Sucked in that chick that I hate. All right. All right. Look, really sorry for I the technical error. I would actually name her if I knew who it was, but there is one that is just so obnoxious. And every time I see her, I think, my God, the world would be a better place if you just poof, banished into thin air. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes. All right. We, we need to get down to the real nitty gritty of this. All the people that were saying that uh, there should be a woman on this podcast, there was. Miss Love. And you hated her. Yeah. And now she's gone because we've been getting so much negative feedback about Miss Love that we had a talk with him. And I've got to say, it was very easy because uh, I don't know if you know this about Miss Love after seeing him on the podcast for years. He's very suggestible. And we just said to him, how about you not be on the podcast anymore? To which his response was, yeah, okay, it was a good run. And he's off with the rest of his life. He took the day off early today. And it wasn't because he was bummed. It was just because... Uh, there was nothing. He's watched all the maths. He's up to date, <laughs> which Can is you, his job. Isn't that insane? If you are a woman watching this, this is what Ali's <laughs> girlfriend said when I said, he's paid to watch maths so he can just fast forward to the juicy bits for me. Ali's girlfriend's response was, fuck, I hate Miss Love. <laughs> <laughs> and so does the audience. Yeah, well, he's gone now. I hope you're happy. Please don't get, please don't kick me out too. Because who are you going to get if both Miss Love and I are gone on audience request? Uh, I think we all know the answer to that. Uh, that, that, I can't remember his name now. But that Stuart Little journalist. Stuart. That'd be an amazing podcast. Well, Hugh Laurie from no, Stuart Little the movie. No. The guy that I'm always paying out looks like Stuart Little from The Telegraph. I can't, oh. I can't remember his name. This is embarrassing. But, yeah, I think that that's what I'll get. I'll get a bunch of journalists that I hate, and it'll just be, we'll, we'll call it the death arena. Yeah, why don't you do it? You, Michael West, and... Um, and you know who recently who got fired I don't or hate left? Michael West. Yeah. No, you don't hate Michael West, but this is going to be a good combination. The lady from Sunrise, she just left. Ah, so she's available. She <laughs> single and ready to mingle. Eh? Well, she didn't leave her whoever partner. She left Sunrise. <sighs> That's her on air partner, and I can feel that gap. I can <laughs> even make myself sound exactly like David Costa. She doesn't even know she's not a Channel Seven anymore. <laughs> um, for I think she would have noticed. I mean, look at how professional our background is. Uh, you know, that, that's exactly the same as a multi-million dollar studio. She'll be right at home. <laughs> Little, uh, what's her name? Uh, someone is asking, forgot their name. Is this the real part? The answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is anymore. Me neither. Yeah, look, stop giving Ali enough more stress. He's had enough. Yeah, tonight. I know. I've had enough. I had a whole fucking podcast plan and I've forgotten most of it. Did you? 
Yeah, well, I've got notes in my hand, so <laughs> it might help. All right, the Stig had a but podcast. But should, should, we, should we actually start the podcast then? Well, it started. No, let's do it with a proper one. Because this is going to go one. on like all pod feed. This can't go yeah, the way it, it is. All right. One, two, three, go. Welcome to the Friendly Geordies <laughs> podcast. Minus <laughs> Miss Love. Because Permanently. He's gone. Because why, Jordan? Why did you, why did you fire Miss Love? The audience hated him. Everybody keeps writing in the comments, get rid of Miss Love now. And then we thought, okay, your wish is our command. And so he's gone. I and mean, he didn't have an issue with it. Yeah, but I have an issue with it. it. Because when it's like, uh, you know, when, uh, when the US attacked Iraq, Iran wasn't happy. They knew they were next. <laughs> Hence, I know Miss Love's gone, but... You're Iran. I'm Iran. I'm, <laughs> shit, I'm shit in my pants. Please don't fire me. Yeah, but the thing is that... They haven't really attacked Iran, have they? It's just been a decade and a half of their finger hovering on the button. Which, <laughs> if, if that was the case, I would prefer to just be invaded, really. Like, if yeah. the next 15 years of your life is any second up. <laughs> <laughs> just do it already. Um, well, so Miss Love's gone. I hope this podcast now gets a lot better. Um, let's start. Well, according to everybody, that was the missing ingredient that needs to go. I really don't understand why Carl Pilkington works so well for Ricky Gervais, but for some reason, on a podcast that most people tune in for heady political analysis, Carl Pilkington isn't the best permanent staff member on that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Isn't he still working with them? Is the is the the tripod still a thing? Stephen Merchant, Ricky Gervais, and. Uh Carl Pilkington? I wish it was, but I think they've all moved on to bigger and better things, which is Carl Pilkington sometimes is on British quiz shows. Uh, I don't know what happened to the other guy that everyone can't remember the name Stephen of. Merchant. Stephen Merchant. I liked him. Stephen Merchant. Why? Because he was... He He's had clearly a, the weakest link. Because he had a stand-up called Hello Ladies, which was about him struggling with women, and I related to that. <laughs> Are you kidding? I wish I was. But you knew the struggle of Steve Merchant. Well, he had different struggles. He was a he was a giant man. <laughs> was he? <laughs> yeah, he was like seven foot or some shit. And but also, he's just got that wacky inflatable man posture. Yeah, and 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 not athletic, so he can't play basketball either. <laughs> so he had it's this both worlds, lanky and skinny fat. Yeah, so he went on like a year long tour to find himself a missus, and I think he did. By the end of it. Yeah? Yeah, not at one of his shows that she... But, yeah, it's, it's a happy ending. But can so we, that's what happened to him. He got married. I think I think he's still with her. Because, dude... as right. as, and as we all know, Ricky Gervais is dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you're just tuning in? You didn't hear the news? Ricky Gervais is the only... I'm still sadder about Samantha Arvidage leaving Sunrise, but it's, it's up there. Yeah. Now, you know what, though? I'm very glad that Samantha Arvidage is gone. Why did she I leave? I hate her. Huh? Why did she leave? What do you think happened there? Uh, something about permanent. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just read like a very brief article saying, I had personal issues in life. And that's true. Life's hard. I don't know what they were, but uh, can you bring back Melissa Doyle? Yes. You Actually, you know what? Armitage, Samantha, was almost as good as Melissa Doyle. No, she wasn't. Yes, she was. Yeah, okay, in your books, because she is exactly who you want to date, which is a milkmaiden from the 1500s. <laughs> but I want to date some Aussie mum from Queensland that doesn't know there's any other spreads other than Vegemite. True, but you're selling Melissa Doyle short. She is very, very... Anyways, can we move on to our first segment, which is very substantial. Melissa Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> I, fig I realized I'm a conservative. Never uh, wanted to be... But you know why? The eternal struggle. Continues. I know the yes. eternal struggle. But I think I'm finally now coming to terms with what you mean by these labels. Because I was watching uh, the Oprah Winfrey interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. You watched that? Well, I watched bits and pieces of it. Who hasn't? Uh, you. <laughs> me. But I did get the highlights from Kyle and Jackie O. God, what a great show. It just highlights all the trash, but filters it through Kyle's filthy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what, I, I'm saying that I realize I'm a conservative because I realize every opinion that I had was being <laughs> spewed in Sky News and not MSNBC. Of course. Well, what were the views? Well, my views were, first of all, I think Prince Harry is a moron. 
I'm gonna fucking say it. First yeah, of all, all of his shit about like, oh, there was racism over there. Dude, didn't your grandma own like three fourths of the brown population in her lifetime? Like she owns, so- yes, she's racist. Like, um, yeah, but now it affects me. But also, more yeah. importantly, aren't you racist, Harry? I still remember clips of you where you were calling random people in the military ragheads and packies. <laughs> what happened to that? <laughs> And lastly, dude, you know what the entire struggle of a marriage is? Trying to fucking, you know, uh, balance the competing interests. I understand your wife has problems with her mother-in-law. Would you believe it? Every wife does. (laughs) You guys are just royalty, so it's way accentuated. But... um, Well, was that what they were talking about? The struggles of marriage? Look, the, the whole thing is, wasn't that guy going to be king? No, no, no. He's not going to be king. His brother's going to be. That's uh, why well, he's yeah, got nothing he can to abdicate lose. anyway. There's no such thing as you don't need an heir and a spare anymore. In fact, I don't think you need heirs anymore. I think Queen Elizabeth will still be alive in the year ten thousand because of how good modern medicalism. Like they kept a Coke brother alive with terminal cancer for twenty five years. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, don't need Prince Charles. For most third world countries, that is the life expectancy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. I just and he lived comfortably with one of the most painful diseases on earth. We're yeah. getting good at this life thing. Yeah. The other complaints that they had is, uh, oh, the British tabloid is pretty insane, yeah? And the British tabloid oh, is insane. But, dude, your fucking royalty, your entire job is to handle that because you're not doing anything else. You're not fucking roofing houses. You're just going around cutting ribbons and waving at the cameras. Yeah. And you know what? It really has gotten to the end of the line with the royal family. They have become too inbred and degenerate. I was a big fan of George, big fan of Elizabeth. Prince Charles, actually, he's all right. He's a class act. <laughs> but he's a piece of shit, kids. You know what really, this is an unpopular opinion, it was Princess Diana. Yeah, she, she really... This whole thing, as soon as they started marrying commoners... It's, actually, you know what it was? It was, it was the other way around. They should have just remained and kept the gene pool inbred. They're all legends. You're the, the inbred ones are legends. But you're the only person in the world that is still saying, keep it inbred. Because <laughs> my problem was, one of the things that she said was that, oh, um, I don't know who was... I think Prince Philip was racist because they were saying, ooh, uh, how black is the baby going to be? But I'm pretty sure they were hoping that it was more like Meghan Markle. Because, dude, the royal family, they might be great or whatever, but in terms of looks, they all suck balls. True that. None of them are good looking. Meghan Markle Very is good good. looking. I'm pretty sure... Nah, she's... Come on, like, can we stop going down the fucking... Like, comparatively. Comparatively. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Dude, it's... Prince like, Harry she is a... She's g- competing against Queen Elizabeth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Queen Elizabeth was known for her hot body. I'm just saying, the looks... The, the family is not about looks. The family is about other stuff. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure whoever was saying this was saying it hoping that the kid looks less like Harry and more like Meghan. But you know what is really weird, though? I, I, I really... Needs, like, God, if you're Prince Harry, as in pretty close to being the king of the British Empire, surely you could do better than Megan. Oh, you're saying she's Megan's not that like, hot. Megan's like a seven. But dude, can I... <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to say. Why? I, they, why like, if you're going to marry out of the royal family, yeah, surely being pretty much king... Gets you a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah, well, I don't think Harry had issues with uh, scoring hot women. Didn't he? I think he ended up with Megan. Because, look, I don't know much about her, but, like, I, I feel like, like I know Harry, and he is a bit of a cock, dude. <laughs> like, he, yeah, he's a bit of an... He's a deep if one. I'm a lady, I'm not into uh, Harry. Also, what are you complaining about, dude? Like... Your brother has it way tougher. He's the one who's supposed to be handling everything. He doesn't even have the option of just leaving. At least you have the option of leaving. It's so, like, it actually does infuriate me that you can leave the royal family. That should not be an option. Yeah, you should be killed. 
Yeah, beheaded. Beheaded. Like, why do you guys still have beefy? And one of the Isn't it just for this exact situation. One of the things that she was talking <laughs> about, or they were talking about, was uh, how Kate Middleton made her cry for wearing the wrong outfit. I swear that happens in every family. What, dude? What are these pathetic? Fucking problems in <laughs> life, and you. why are so many people tuning into them? I They're like know. worse than your problems. Yeah, you know, like the <laughs> thing, <laughs> you know where that, that old phrase "first world problems." Yeah, dude, this is royal family problems. Yeah, it's it's a stupid family spat, but because it's the royals, it's in front of everyone. But I hate the fact that the entire world, including me, is just taking sides in this stupid. <laughs> you, if it was any <laughs> other family, we would just be like. Guys, just settle it or don't see each other. We don't care. It's a very common thing, but for some reason, Oprah sits there and every time she goes, and then I cried because she said my dress was hideous and she goes, oh, no. oh my God. No, she did. What? Bitch, you know what she did. Every sister in law. And haven't you, Oprah, haven't you interviewed murderers and murder victims <laughs> in the past? Why are you so shocked? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're both <laughs> pathetic. But I'm just saying, if there's any villain in this story, it's Prince Harry for just being too much of a cut. I saw his uh, interview with uh, James Corden, too. Ah, <laughs> no, all the stars. All right. All the, the three champions. most annoying British people on earth in the same room. Yeah, all the champions in one frame. And, uh, and he was, he, yeah, he was talking about how uh, the media was just getting too insane for me, and I decided, I've, 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 I've got to get out of here. I've really got to get out of here. Dude, <laughs> aren't you the one that was saying boat people need to go back and shit? And you think an extra, I don't know, news of the world was slightly harsh. <laughs> and so, so you weird. had to, and he was saying, and you know what? And you know what? My dad cut me off financially. Good! Every dad should cut their kids off financially. This is not an excuse that I am going to feel sympathetic for. It's like, and, and, and luckily, if my mother hadn't left me millions of dollars of property, I don't know how I would have survived. <laughs> Dude, if you're going to be, if you're going to have that upright, if you're going to have that uptidy position about like, no, I'm a man of principles and I'm going to leave the royal family, then you need to come to terms with the fact that you're not going to get a single cent. Yes. You're going to go have to go out there and make money. And guess what, Prince Harry? You're Prince Harry. I'm sure it's not going to be that difficult. Yes. Seeing as you just did an interview that was seen by 17 million people, <laughs> which is the same views that Friends used to get. Yeah. <laughs> and I How like them. Friends on a million dollars an episode. Yeah. I think, you can that. I think you can live off a million dollars an interview. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like Obama offered him... Because uh, Obama started some production company. I think Obama's trying to be the next Dr. Dre. He started some production company where he's going to be producing movies and I don't know what not. And he apparently Why? wanted to produce. Uh, that's his new thing. That's what he wants to do. What? He wants to that's such a left hook. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I was expecting him to finish his little real life Zoolander uh, school for kids who can't read good. Have you seen that? No. He's setting it up. It is an exact replica of uh, Zoolander. It's like, what is this? The Center for Ants. <laughs> he actually is building that. Well, he's, well, he's a busy man, I suppose. I guess he's, he's doing that and making movies. You can't really... Say, well, maybe he's getting into that stage of life that hipsters get into, where they're just like, oh, I'm a rapper and an artist and an actor. Well, this is, to be fair to him, this is his point of view on this, of why he's producing movies. Uh, uh, he's saying he wants to uh, help the cultural fabric by basically he's Making gonna more SJW exactly shit. exactly well there you go um, you know what though if anyone could kind of bridge that it would be Obama seeing as he was dude you know you know what I've noticed more and more you know what I, I really do think is a way to finally end the culture war just pay out hipsters <laughs> that's that's your advice to Obama, dude. He did that a little bit, didn't he? Do like this uh, speech, which I think got a lot of traction. We were saying, like, if you're if you're sitting in your room with your keyboard and typing mean things about someone, and you think you're making a difference, let me tell you, well, y you ain't. So he did he did a little bit of that, like a really mild criticism of SJW stuff. Yeah, but. 
Only because he read a mean tweet about himself, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> and Wouldn't also, that be amazing if that was the reason? And also There's so a little tear that came <laughs> off just before he went on camera. <laughs> yeah. It affected him. Well, there you go. That's our segment from Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Obama. All right. <laughs> let's move on. Yeah, let's move on to other stuff. Okay. What do you? Where do you stand on this opinion? You know how Italy blocked two hundred and fifty thousand COVID vaccines to Australia. Well, that's all I know about that. Well, so Italy, Italy's point of view is they were saying that um, we're not sorry for. <laughs> 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 but oh, but their point of view what is a refreshing. Stance. <laughs> yeah, but they're saying that this is not a punishment or anything. You, we need a lot more than you do. Yeah, fair. And France, do. France is saying the same thing. And I'm, yes. I'm, I know this is like a thing. I want the uh, COVID vaccine too, so I can like I don't know, finally travel overseas. But they do have a point, <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? But then there's, <sighs> I mean, look, people are fucking uh, dropping uh, like flies, and we are pretty pretty chill for the time being. Does anyone have COVID in Australia? Well, Scratcher, does anyone have COVID in the Southern Hemisphere? What else is here other than New Zealand and Australia? Aren't those the only two countries? I think South Africa is entirely COVID now. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's become, oh, really? Yeah, the map's now become a COVID symbol. Uh, they came out ah, with that so monster strain. with AIDS. Well done. <laughs> <Shit>. Panther, <laughs> Panthera, Panthera, <laughs> Panthera. Uh, but no, that's... Well, uh, so the, their argument is... And then now there's rift between... Um, actually, we caused a bit of a rift. So England and UK and Germany are on our side and France and Italy are on the other side. So UK and Germany is saying, don't... Why? Why? Because they assured Australia that they won't block any of their vaccines. And uh, Italy just sort of went by themselves and said, now nah, we're going to block it. And Good for them. And the UK is saying that they will actually divert some of their vaccines to well, cover this. Why? I don't know. We I don't need them. I think there's, I think what it tells you. Like, dude, I was, I reported on COVID extensively throughout the entire beginning of the first wave outbreak. And I'm still not sure if it's a myth or not. Like it's, it's so not part of the fabric here. Mm. I, I suppose everybody in, in Victorians, in Victoria is very angry at me at the moment, but you're not part of Australia either. <laughs> so get out. <laughs> yeah, and your premier's dead. Wait, sorry. Oz. My bad. Uh, but I just wanted to confirm Wait, something. What I, happened? I heard I heard that I don't know if this is true and I'm not trying to spread mi uh, misinformation, but is it true that Daniel Andrews is in ICU right now? Let can, us know. Can you confirm because I might be completely wrong and I'm just self But I swear I heard it on the, the radio. Yes, yes. No, it's true. Really? Shit. How bad is it? Well, if it's in intensive care, I imagine it's, yeah. He Bad? broke his rib and vertebrate. Wait, does that mean backbone? What vertebrate did he break? It's not that bad. He's in ICU, broken ribs. He'll be all right. Dude, broken ribs is not okay. <laughs> is that yeah. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, get well soon cards for Andrews. Oh, but do you, what, what do you think? Well, first, uh, I'm just going to say this. Dude, if that is this audience's opinion... Of Daniel Andrews being in intensive care. Can you imagine what the average Australian's opinion is? Like these these are all <laughs> hardcore Labour supporters and everyone's just like, get up, pussy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> have you have you noticed that uh, a, a few weeks ago Albo was in an accident and today Dan Andrews is an accident? Dan. Coincidence? Are you saying this is some CIA shit? I'm saying it even bigger than CIA. What? No, nah, it's CIA. It's, it's <laughs> Asia. Oh, <laughs> uh, we shouldn't be laughing at this because I think the guy is in ICU. Look, get well soon, Dan. If anybody deserves get well soon cards, it's Daniel Andrews. Yes. And us. And I bet you there will be get well soon cards that are sent to us. Oh, which reminds me, we should be opening up that gift. Oh, yes. We need to share. Actually, we've got a letter as well, too. Um, bring, bring both. There's a box and there's a letter underneath it. And, um, so thank you for sending us lovely, lovely gifts. We haven't opened one of them. Let's open the letter first. Do you want to open it? 
Yes. I'll keep this on the side. I think I know what this is. Wait, wait. It said it, it said at the bottom, do not rip. But how are you supposed to open it if you can't rip it? Oh, I think it said don't rip it. I think you're doing all right. Sorry, I'm just going to shut up. Wow, this guy has very similar handwriting to Miss Love. Do you, do you want to replace him on this podcast? There is a vacancy. <laughs> there is now a vacancy. Soon to be two vacancies. Oh, wait. What is that? All right. Sorry. Who is this by? Let's see. No, it's at the bottom. It's at the back. They didn't put their name. No, no. It's it's right there. I saw, I saw the name. Where? S- Stafford Heights. No. <laughs> Where? From oh, Xavier. Xavier. Cheers, Xavier. Xavier right. Jenkins. Bought these at Owens Guns in Gympie. Wow. I am jealous that you have visited there. Show show the show that camera. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. Thank you. Would like to know, put these in the podcast wall. Yeah, well, we'll be the judge of that, mate. I'm just going to look at these later. Jordan and Ali, do you speed read when reading books? And if so, how? Love, Xavier. Well, I think that you can tell from how long it took me to read that very simple <laughs> post <laughs> note that I don't speed read. <laughs> what about you? you? Neither do I. Only for, like, uh, uni shit. I have read two speed read books that ironically took me ages to read, and I have tried <laughs> the Jim Quick method. It doesn't make you any quicker. I think that speed reading is a myth, and if anybody can correct me on that, I would love to be corrected because I would really like to speed read. Well, I don't know what speed read technically is because I... It's just skimming. Yeah, I, that, that I can't, that I do, but then I'm not retaining all of it. That's yes, the point. Yes. So that's the whole thing is... Can you speed read and retain information? Let let's ask the audience. Not not retain information. Xavier, over to you. But this is what law teaches you, because you know we've got to read like freaking tens of thousands word judgments, and most of it is kind of irrelevant to us. We really need to look for a critical piece of information and like which is buried in in like thousands of words. So what you do is you don't read all of it, but. Almost when you when you get into the practice of reading judgments, you almost intuitively know where to stop and where is that information that you're looking at. So you can go like, uh, 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 you know, like. So I'm not keeping. I've seen judges do that. Yeah, it's very impressive. It's it's impressive, and and the ones that practice the most are able to do it. But you know, even that's kind of not going to be required. Soon we'll have softwares that can read most of it. But that's a particular skill that uh, lawyers have. But it's not speed reading. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can call it what you want. What is speed reading? Does speed reading claim that you're retaining every single piece of information? I think it is. Wait, well, what are the people saying? I'd like to know because, I, God, if you could read a book in like 30 seconds, that'd be pretty sick. Speed reading is good for getting the gist. Okay, so, so it's it not works. a thing that actually exists. I do remember there was a Danos Direct ad years ago. With uh, one of those guys with really thick Coke bottle glasses that used to say, I was illiterate, look at me read now. And he was reading it very fast. But again, I don't know if he actually was, but he was moving the pages quickly. Yeah, well, Fat Dyke on Crack is saying maybe it's harder for Jordan because his internal voice is very prominent. <laughs> Did Fat Dyke How do you know about this Fat Dyke on Crack? Because he listens to the up late. Uh, R.I.P. Miss Love. Yeah, look. Oh, what the hell? I own guns. I once voted liberal. You've got this sign wrong, Xavier. Wait, did you show it to me? I own guns and I vote liberal. There you go. Wait, hold up. Jealous. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No, I got it because they banned guns. Sorry. I'm an idiot. God, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at Jen Weiss, most prominent political commentator. But that is a great... I'm putting it up. You're right. You were right to give this to us, Xavier. You're a very, very nice man. And this is the second one. Liberals are the cream of society. Rich, thick, and full of clots. Thank you very much. Well, th- no, see, this one I don't like because it's nasty to the liberals. Because <laughs> you're very nice to them. But I'm just kind of... Well, now that Miss Love's here, there's no check on it, but I really like irony, man. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of irony, I saw uh, uh, the the MP for Hughes in my local calls 
arguing with a with a man about why he left. But he wasn't arguing, was he? No, it was very civil. The guy was a tradie. He was a fanboy, you could tell. Yep. Well, we all are. <laughs> yeah, I certainly am. He yeah. has done attack articles on me, and I'm more of a fan Dude, of a Craig Kelly. How man. funny, how funny is that news.com article? I think it might be the funniest article that's ever been written about me. <laughs> he, he, you could see his rage. <laughs> the funny thing is it starts off with uh, the YouTuber says... Uh, let's start Operation Piss Off Craig Kelly. <laughs> Guess what, dude? Operation Successful. <laughs> he is so pissed off. You should have called police. If I, if I, when I saw him, if I told him that I work with you, I bet you he would literally start beating me up over there. <laughs> Stay away from my family. Yeah. Hughes' version of Liam Neeson. And the, and the funny thing is, the cops are like, yeah, look, there's no crime here, so we're just going to go. <laughs> Why? Why? No, stay. If, if, if you're going to do this, then who's going to want to be an MP in the future? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? MP Who would want unlimited free travel and a pension seven times better than everyone else's? Yeah. For somebody <laughs> putting a flag in your house of a country that you like. Yeah, they While it was on open inspection. <laughs> but we know for sure, right, that um, uh, I'm asking this. We know for sure that he gets lobbying money from Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Is that conf- I don't Azerbaijan know. Yeah, you know. But th- th- here's the thing. For me, there is no other reason for someone to have that much of a sympathetic view towards a fuck all country <laughs> that makes no difference to us, you know? <laughs> so there must it be... Does s- make- but so I don't know that. that so don't a don't file a defamation because I'm not sure. But usually in politics, when you end up supporting, like you know, when people say, uh, when certain people go like, "Oh, we should really improve our relations with Vietnam," they are usually getting some kind of lobbying money from Vietnam. Maybe it's because of gas. Maybe it's because they need more sympathetic votes in the UN. But then again, they don't really need any more sympathetic votes from the UN because they've got Israel's vote. And I'm matter. telling you, like some lobby groups have paid him. But uh, sorry, I, I don't know. I don't know that. Um, but usually that's how it works. There's no other way for someone, for an well, MP he used to be of a furniture Hughes. salesman. Maybe he was just looking for business opportunities to sell more to them. Whatever it is, it it's seems money. rather suspicious, you know? <laughs> yeah, it does. You're right. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, you're right. Why would a man who, if I didn't know that Azerbaijan was a country and I've mm. been to that area, it was right next to the country that I visited, why would Craig Kelly know? He's the minister for Hughes. Like, I'm pretty sure that guy doesn't know Western Australia exists. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what I'm saying. Because, look, you know, usually, look, if you're, let's say you're a foreign country, right, mm-hmm. and you are interested in having a favorable opinion in the Australian political circle of your country, you're not going to go to the prime minister. That's stupid. First of all, the prime minister is going to be really scared of you because they were like, oh, I don't want to be associated with anyone. Like, because, you know, in Australian politics, you're already on like a laser thing. Actually, not anymore. The guy who left his job for that wine bottle is really regretting it now. <laughs> Because he's like, uh, look, I don't want to repeat it. He should have held out for more. He should have. He should have. <laughs> and uh, I think everyone agrees that. Even I was like, why are you quitting over <laughs> a bottle of wine, man? What a moron. <laughs> he, he's really thinking that. You can't get away with murder in Australian politics. Like, isn't it insane? He could, he could, that guy would still be premier today. Yes, he would. What the hell? Because he likes... Because he got a wine bottle. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's st- but, you know, maybe th- that's how much Australian politics has changed. No, I think that it was because... Because I remember talking to Labour staffers about it at the time and they were saying something... We weren't going to press him on this in Parliament. We weren't even going to make a song and dance hey. about it. And we're the opposition. Hey, our cameras are frozen. <laughs> Today is a Damn. wonderful day. One second, I'll try to fix to quote that. Quote Jay Z. On to the next one. Can you still hear us, though? Continue. 
Yeah, let's just see what people are saying. Well, I'll, I'll talk. Of All right. What's everyone saying? All right. Snarky things as always. Well, that's very refreshing. Thank you so much, my little conies. Yep, 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 yep. More sarcasm. <sighs> Love that. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Glackmate is saying, George, get your dick out. It'd be funny. Well, it's frozen. All right, boys, you asked for it. Yeah. Dick's out for the conies. Okay, so the stream went away, but it should be back now. All right, we're back? Yeah, we're back. Still frozen. Nah, it'll, it'll fix itself. Look, today has been a horrible day in terms of uh, technical shit. Yes, it has. But, sorry, we're back. Hey. I want to get people's opinions on this. I interviewed Bill Shorten... And I asked him all the tough questions like, um, yeah, th w would you say that you're a good role model? Because I think you are, which is a direct quote of what I asked that man. And I think that might have been the toughest question that I asked him. But what I noticed when I was speaking to him is for the first three minutes, the guy was just stiff. He was the Bill Shorten that you see on camera. And then, because I wasn't, I don't know, jumping across the table and choking him, he uh, <laughs> loosened up a bit. And I think I captured the Bill Shorten that everyone in the Labor Party is always talking about, that he's a sick dog. Isn't that insane that for six years he was sitting there and he was so nervous of slipping up and the press was so hostile to him that they turned him into an empty shell of a man. You could see it. When he walked into the room, wasn't awkward and nervous at all. As soon as it got to the point where the cameras were going, the guy had post-traumatic stress. Like He's just so used to getting slammed that as soon as it was even close to a camera, it was like a Vietnam vet being like, you know? Yeah, it's really, it's really unfortunate because... Um I understand where he's coming from. What? What? <laughs> you, from he, me and Miss slamming you every week? No, he was. Uh, he was. He was in a really shitty situation. <laughs> the Labour Party politicians have it way tougher than Liberal Party. Look at like the entire cabinet right now has some sort of an accusation, and everyone stands behind everyone. And Labour, I don't know, but like. Anything happens, like, the first people to abandon them is, like, people from their own party. Yeah. Don't you think that if somebody knew about Barry O'Farrell getting a wine bottle, there was just some email of someone saying, hey, did you get a wine bottle? Nice. Can I have a glass? Even that, they'd just be like, you, you shipped from that bottle? You're going to have to ship down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he got so nervous about it too. But look, at least that was also a Liberal Party member. What? Because I wouldn't... Because at least, at least in today's politics, it seems that if you're in the Liberal Party, all everyone in your party will stick up for you and you can get away with a lot of shit. Yeah. But if you're in Labour, you can't get away with anything because the first people that are going to like abandon you are people from your own party. So yeah. I'm saying that the wine guy, Barry... The, the premier before uh, Mike Baird. I'm happy that he's a liberal <laughs> because then it just, it's a sad story. It's a one-sided <laughs> sad story. So I'm happy that at least he was from the liberal party. Yeah. I uh, wholeheartedly agree. Does put a chink in my theory that liberals can get away with anything because they did step down for a bottle of wine. But I still think that that is because something bigger was happening. And the little message was, you step down for this other skeletons aren't revealed. And I think it's because, uh, knowing from talking to people that are in New South Wales politics, they were saying that everybody in politics now, because they've just been in for so long and they're all so implicit in the corruption, everybody has shit on everyone and everyone is too scared to do anything. It's a permanent Mexican standoff mm. with words. Ooh, racy. So maybe that was kind of the beginning of it. 
And so there's a, there's always just little competing factions in there. So one of Stokesy or someone probably thought, yeah, fucking dad, mate. Um, now, the other thing that I just wanted to say while I'm thinking about Bill Shorten, that guy has mastered how to win friends and influence people. He is the most friendly man I think I've ever met. He's so self-effacing and he's so complimentary and he's... Dude, I really do think that that is the reason that he lost. No, look, apart from media bias, blah, 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 but I think especially if you're going to be a Labour leader, you really need to have that man of destiny vibe about you. You really need to take credit for things you can't. As we were saying off air, Kevin Rudd, and he's right to do this as well, will sit there and say, oh, single-handedly saved us from the GFC. It was all fucking me. Uh, Wayne Swan didn't know shit. The thousand economists that we employ, they're all fucking cucks. It was me. <laughs> and it's me, cunt. He's got my vote. I love him. <laughs> yeah, I love him for it. It's kind of... The arrogance sells it. You talk to Paul Keating, same thing. Department of Treasury, which is a bunch of clowns. The reason that there was all those 80s reforms was purely because you're... Hey! Like, we're not saying that they're not geniuses. They're very smart people, but there is a lot of eggheads in Canberra. <laughs> and so <laughs> I think the only difference that separates them from the others is they, they, they're eggheads with confidence, which is such a rare breed because there's not that many eggheads, but an egghead that can get laid? Man... Really once in a generation. But I think that with Bill Shorten, the guy hated talking about himself. He wouldn't take credit for anything. He could stand up there and just be like, I single-handedly took the two miners in the Beaconsfield mining disaster. I pulled them out. It would be better for the Labor Party. It really would. And I think it's because people that are going to vote for the Labor Party are going to vote for the Labor Party. But what Kevin Rudd did was he was kind of just running almost as an independent that just so happened to be with the Labour Party. You know, you can vote for me and I'll just let these dipshits to come in as well, but you know who you're voting for? The K-Man, right? And so he was also picking up a lot of independent votes from a bunch of dumb shits in Wollongong going, oh, fuck yeah, Kevin, yeah. He's slightly more charismatic than John Howard. Nice. <laughs> I think that that was really important in getting him over the line. He had that magic touch of he could be in the Labor Party when he needed to be and he could be an independent when he wanted to be. And Bill Shorten, he was always trying to put the Labor Party in front of himself. It's his natural inclination. He's an extremely smart guy. I do think he's a genuinely really good person. And I think that that's part of the reason that he does that. And he was also grown up in a, in a Christian household. So... It was a lot of just trying to beat the seven deadly sins out of him. Well, that's not Prime Minister material. Good person? What are you talking about? Don't you think? <laughs> it's true, isn't it? A good person is not Prime Minister material. Yeah, he can. He could technically take a lot of credit for things that he never did. Like, I would... I don't know if this is true. You would know more. But isn't he, like, single-handedly responsible for NDIS as well? Yep. <laughs> single-handedly. And I told him about that. I actually said you were responsible for it. You go, oh, no, well, you know, there was other people that helped draft up the policy. And Come on, man. Rip your chest off and have an NDIS tat on it. <laughs> 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 Sorry, not chest, shirt. Yeah, well, uh, maybe that's why. Yeah, it, well, clearly, that's why he lost. Sometimes you got to sell. Because if a salesman is never going to say how awesome the product is, I'm less inclined to buy it. Yeah, I think it's a real lesson in life. When people say, don't take credit for anything and it comes back to you, that's true in private life. But in public life, the exact opposite is true. Mm. Just follow Donald Trump's advice of, you know, like him taking credit for coming up with the COVID vaccine. Yeah. He did that. Well, anyway. But you know what? But actually, sorry. Can I? Uh, if you want to continue, Bill Jones, but I want to. I want to say something about that. Sneaky Joe is taking a lot of credit for things that don't belong to him. Is he? Yeah. But anyway, continue with. Uh, no, no, no. Go on. Go on. Well, I. Uh, one of the problems that I am uh, experiencing with the current news cycle coming out of the U.S. is that they're still talking about Trump. They're mm. saying how bad Trump was. 
look, I'm not saying Trump was good, but you got to take ownership of a few things. First, first of all, okay, Trump was really bad at containing COVID. I 100% agree. Trump did not do what uh, Australia or New Zealand did. But Trump, what he was good at was Operation Warp Speed. Like he really turbocharged vaccine research. His entire emphasis was on that because he was thinking hopefully he can get a vaccine by then. So he laid out a lot of work uh, that, um, and now Joe Biden's coming. Remember when we first thought he was going to come and he said that we might introduce a nationwide lockdown, start doing some uh, tra tracing, uh, contact tracing, but he didn't do anything. He All he did was he came in and he said, I'm going to try and vaccinate as many people as possible in the shortest amount of time. Guess who else was saying that? Trump was saying that. And it seems like there, whenever Joe Biden does anything wrong, it's about how bad, how bad the Trump uh, administration was, which is exactly the same thing as Trump did when he came into power. How bad the Obama administration was. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I just don't, I don't understand um, why we're letting this happen. What? We were criticizing Trump for it, but we're not criticizing Joe Biden for it. As soon as Joe Biden says, Trump's, you, I can't tell you how bad he left this department. First of all, Trump wasn't single-handedly doing it all by himself. It's the same people. Those departments have the same bureaucracy and they're still working over there. He just chose their heads and how much damage could they do in four years? So I'm, I'm just saying that Joe Biden is, uh, is, is not... Joe Biden is a hypocrite. A little, bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. The only thing that he did do... I mean, do, you're right. The only thing that he did do was... it's the game. Yeah, it's the game, but I, I, at least when Trump was saying it, we were criticizing him, but no one seems to be criticizing Joe Biden when he says it. Everyone's like, yeah, well, he's right. You know how the old saying about Truman was that he had on his presidential desk that old, the buck stops here. Mm. That was Truman, right? Maybe. Look, one of the presidents that was in black and white, and not for <laughs> arty reasons like Obama would be. In real life, he was black and white. Production films. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> as, we all, as we all know, presidents went from oil paintings to black and white, and that's exactly how they look. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and they also went into sepia. Man, sepia looks fucked, doesn't it? it it's such a... Wait, it just looks haunted now. Wait, sepia? You know, you know, like, okay, you look at a photo of, I don't know, Ike Eisenhower, and it's in black and white, and it kind of just looks arty now. It, it looks like, I don't know, maybe he was a Hollywood producer in the 50s. It, it looks crisp. Mm -hmm. But then you go to... Photos of I don't know General Grant, and it's and it's sort of like a light brown. It's fading. His eyes still look really piercing for some reason. Do you think it's just like low budget for the painting? What? We're shitty artist required for the general. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because it was a no. It wasn't even a war. Grant was a president after that, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he didn't. He didn't shoot Lincoln and then automatically. That's <laughs> <laughs> that society. In my, my American history is a bit rusty. He wasn't the one who shot Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. I was saying that the buck stops here. God, this is such a dumb point, but do you think that the buck actually stopped there? Do you think no. that he was not doing what Joe Biden is now? Because Anybody who reminds me of an old timey president from that time was Joe Biden. Joe Biden, to me, seems like he should have been president in Ike Eisenhower's time, and Ike Eisenhower should be president now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ike Joe, Eisenhower seems more modern. I, I I don't know what Joe Biden is really doing. <laughs> I mean, I saw him the other day introduce his wife as Joe Biden. So. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, he, was, he, he raised his, this was during the campaign, he raised his wife's hand and he's like, and this is Joe Biden. <laughs> no, this is my husband, Joe Biden. 
<laughs> Look, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to fall. I don't want to go on that train again and just say like he's senile. I don't know what's up. But all I'm saying. <laughs> But what else? <laughs> like maybe this is Joe Biden. I respect it. My husband jumps. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but he says. What stupid, else is? But this? he used to say stupid shit all the time. He was saying, "We're gonna be George Bush." <laughs> And I'm not and sure. He did. And he did. <laughs> but I'm hoping that he meant George Bush Jr. and not Senior. Because <laughs> look, I, but I don't know. I'm just saying that there's a lot of blame being passed on Trump. And as far as the vaccine production is concerned, um, I think Trump. One of the only few things that he did was that Operation uh, Warp Speed. But what a sick name. I hope he came up with that because that is more impressive than the vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a baller thing to call something. Yeah. And I don't care what it is. If the Iraq war was instead of Operation Desert Storm called Operation Warp Speed, I'd be booing Michael Moore in the Oscars as well. I, I'd be totally on board for Operation Warp Speed. Operation Warp Speed sounds really good. Space Force. Did he come up with that? Well, I don't know, but well, he he started Space Force. What's Space Force? It's it's exactly what it sounds like. It is force for the space. What? So they're just going to make a space shuttle that has a missile to what? Blow up me? I think it's a marketing tactic. What they really mean is that they're going to try and explore more of the space, but this time not by themselves with SpaceX. Really. Yeah, because the U.S. Air Force has done tie-ups with uh, SpaceX. Man, they've really just given up on governing, haven't they? It just Donald Trump was the final. Yeah, this is all the G corporations run everything. But, if, but this is one of the most hipster points ever. But uh, the way Elon Musk is doing it, there was no other option but for them to go for with SpaceX. Because um, NASA was, like, great, and they did incredible things, but it was the way they did things was, like, really inefficient. For one, SpaceX is now able to, like, reuse space shuttles, which is massive, considering that they're very expensive. So Sorry, man. I just, look. That is actually a really good point and a really good utilization of resources, but... I need my little Coney's help for something. As you all know, I've been doing a lot of React videos soon, uh, recently, and I think that the, the, the general sense of my audience is less mislove, more reacts. <laughs> <laughs> Poor mislove. But uh, I can do that. But I was just thinking, how many views would it get? Christo has just been obsessed with it. He keeps showing me this, and I, I hate cringy humor. I can't watch The Office for this exact reason. Mm. But he keeps showing me footage of all of these... I'm, I'm trying to look for a word that isn't autistic, but there is no other word for it. Super autistic people. It's Elon Musk's audience, mm -hmm. right? So think about the people that go to Star Trek conventions... And then think about the people that would be interested in the real-life Star Trek, right? So they have the worst social skills I've ever seen in my life. And when you are watching it, you can't help but look away. I mean, it's, it's impossible to watch. Wait, so what is, what, is, it. what is it? It's like someone standing up in the audience saying... Hello, Elon Musk, like you, I'm a super genius like yourself. Um, and he's just like, I don't know if I'm a super genius. He's like, well, uh, I am, and I'm just wondering, uh, I would like to be CEO of SpaceX. What? So people, people actually say that? Yes, and it's not just him. The next one will stand up and say, I've got a really good idea about getting on, uh, water onto Mars. You should bring water bottles. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just tells you that he is the first... Uh, billionaire who has a massive fan following there's a lot of elon musk fans out really? there. really i don't think that bill gates would have had a fan following <laughs> nah bill what gates about steve jobs steve jobs true true yes yeah oh steve jobs had a huge huge fan following. following yeah and then they all went to elon musk lucky him yeah and uh, apparently elon musk only re respects steve jobs 
Someone, his one of his staffers, one of the, like people that worked for him, once compared him to Howard Hughes. Uh, that? He's the guy in from you know that Leo movie Aviator, the guy who kept the movie producer who kept inventing like airplanes and was crazy, and he eventually became like um, I think he had some phobia of like germs, and he pretty much just killed himself. But he was a crazy inventor. Who kept making new kinds of uh, airplanes? Mm. And um, Are you sure this isn't the wind rises. <laughs> <laughs> similar story. Similar story. It is a very similar story. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Miyazaki isn't the genius that I thought he was. Yeah, he, go on. And as if Miyazaki isn't a billionaire. Yeah, I mean the guy deals in yen. He's a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is every person from Zimbabwe. <laughs> is it? Is yeah. it yen? <laughs> a really funny name for a currency. <laughs> I've never thought about that before. Yeah. Like, Wait. it really, it just, it sounds stupid, doesn't it? Well, as opposed to what? Pound. Pound is pretty dumb, too. Yeah, pound. Everything's dumb except dollars. I'm sorry. There's yeah. no, wait, what are Pakistani bucks called? Rupees. Packy bucks. Oh, Rupees. yeah, that's right. Packy bucks. <laughs> Rupees. Which Round is, bucks. Yeah, which... Um, but, yeah, so um, Elon Musk got pissed off because um, uh, his, uh, I don't know, VP compared him to Howard Hughes. And this was his reason. Uh, I don't think that the comparison is apt. I would say more Steve Jobs. Because he believes... Elon believes that he he is revolutionizing an industry. Well, that's true. And how is, 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 is Steve Jobs really re- revolutionizing an industry in that, hey, you know how there used to be a monopoly on computer branch. Now, they're each a duopoly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. But I guess his point was the whole, you know, the, the smartphone revolution, the way... I think what he means is getting rid of the keypad. <laughs> that was it. Right. Yeah, that, that is a revolution, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's a revolution. Because I you, do like how we're being very snarky and laughing at him while we've got laptops on there. but <laughs> With <on>. Apple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's called an iMac. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We forgot to open the second box. Oh, right. Jeez. <laughs> yes, we are our manners. This yeah. is from Superfeast. This is. Uh, f- without looking at their product. Check it out, guys. Actually, this is exclusively for Miss Love. Now that Miss Love's been fired, I guess it's mine. Well, he's not here to object. He's not here. Let's to go object. look at what he's. It's going to be a pedal. And I, on this, twi- if if this is a pedal, I live on this Twitch stream will hack it to pieces. Who did? Who sent this? Any name? Ah, that's a good. God, I'm a five year old, aren't I? Present. Uh, is is it from Miss Love? <laughs> well, I don't think maybe there's no name on there. Maybe Miss Love did send this. His parting gift: reuse, recycle. Yeah, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, it's more it's it's more mushroom stuff. Mushroom stuff. Yes. Magic mushrooms? Thanks, man. They are magic mushrooms in their own way, but if you're looking for a you know psychedelic trip, I guess look no further. This, my friends, is healthy, which is a much better oh, for... Oh, okay, God. Okay, okay. For somebody, somebody who show pro-recycling, mushroom... Em- oh, capsules. Nice. Oh, these are just supplements. Fuck yeah. Yeah, let's see. What are they supposed to be uh, capsules for? Take four capsules daily. Well, I don't think I'll be doing that. It says maintain and support your immune system and health. Super fit. All right, but but if you are listening, man, thank you so much because we still do use your mushroom powder and it's amazing. But uh, if if you if you are in the comments at the moment, can, can you just explain to us uh, how are you not a snake oil salesman? <laughs> <laughs> How does this work? What I'm is very dubious of pills and will only use them if I have any slight inclination that will reverse the aging process. Ooh, by the way, did you hear about that? No. So there's this Australian guy who works at MIT and he reckons he's figured out how to like uh, reverse aging. So, sorry. Let me repeat that. So... 
he's not saying that you can live forever. He that, was, I'm not in, interested in that. Yeah. I'm just interested in the face. He was saying that you can go through. He's doing it on his dad. His dad's about 85, and he says that he lo, uh, he looks. He has the strength of a 30 year old, even younger. He was saying that his dad is way stronger than him right now because does he look like a thirty year old? Uh, well, that's the thing. He never fucking showed his dad. But this isn't some any random guy. This guy is like he teaches medical science at Harvard, so he's he's an academic, and he's from Bondi Beach. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I use his pills. What you do, and that's why you need to start advertising these as being anti-aging pills because they'll, they'll fly off the shelves. <laughs> yeah. Don't advertise that they're mushrooms. <laughs> Boy, that advertise guy. that they can make you look like you're 21. Boy, that guy sells supplements. Who? The Bondi Beach guy. Yes, he does, and they are expensive as fuck. And I buy them anyway, even though I'm not sure they work, and I don't take them as frequently as I should. And I will continue to do so for the rest of my life. You've got to pay a customer here. And I think he's also written a book recently called Ageless that I'm reading that was available at Target. But he's right. There is a lot of breakthroughs happening in the world of agelessness, which I've just got to say, God, I am so lucky to be part of the generation that I am. First, like YouTube kicked off in my generation and then having a f- young face kicked off as well. Yeah. And w- you're sick. maybe by the time you're like 70, they'll come up with something that can make you immortal. But see, that's a, that's a plus to me. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought it'd be negative. But what would you rather? Would you rather look really hot for 130 years or would you rather just live forever like a Morton Joe and Mad Max? Hot for 130. Yeah, I think so too. I think you just get bored of life. I don't, yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you had the option, would you, like right now I say you have to make a decision. You live forever or you die normal. Would you choose the live forever option? Or you die normal. Like as in whenever you're supposed to die. And you can't die. Yeah, you won't die. But you'll can just you live. No. Nah, you so will it's live impossible forever. to die. Even if you were... All right, but here's the really scary question. If someone just launched you into space as punishment... Someone yeah, you'd just really be roaming it. around in space for eternity. <laughs> Those are the for rules. For that very specific reason, I'm choosing dying normal. Like, yeah, but I, I really don't want that Just don't hang happen. out with Elon. Why? Who would launch you into space for no reason? Yeah, but once you will live to the point where Elon Musk's... Uh, Technology is so refined that that'll just be available to any sadist. And there's going just to be someone online. <laughs> someone from 4chan will do that for a meme. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so you'd, you'd rather die? Well, I just really don't. I guess, here's the other thing. If you live forever, will you feel pain? So if you are hurtling through space, will you just be choking like an astronaut <laughs> would be forever? <laughs> Because I, I really can't think of anything more hellish. Look, than that. there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, mysteries out there. You've got to make a decision now. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, I'm choosing death. Oi, guys, in the comments, let us know. Yeah, Live what forever would you with those circumstances or death? Give Living forever is not good, Jordy. You might have been a minor catalog model, but you don't cling to your looks, bro. Is what? That a payout? I Fuck you! <laughs> but Who's this cunt? Yeah, but. Don't <laughs> I want to see a picture of you, mate. Hey, what's his name? His name is uh, Richard of the Disco. <laughs> no, Rich at the Disco. Oh, yeah, you sound hot. You're into disco now. What well, are you, 70? Everyone is choosing death except for an uh, Australian sleeper who says live forever. He is a psychopath. Whoa. Is somebody doing a uh, vote or what, what's going on here? Nah, they're just saying it, but it seems to be unanimous. They want to die. His, his books, David Sinclair. Oh, okay, so I read the cheap knockoff home brand version of it. Ageless. That's the one that I'm reading at the moment. Life's well, good for everybody that's looking into that. Uh, yeah, I just got to say, well done. If you want to trigger me. The best way to do it is to say that I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no, not ugly. Uh, you're really? No, not even that. Like, you're aging. You're, yeah, you're <laughs> aging. That's the thing. 
<laughs> That's what fucking angers me. 44 Circle says, I want to die in a war. Dude, you are definitely not supposed to be um, in the army then <laughs> because it seems like you want to kill and die. Hang on. And also, Keganator, I would like to hear you extrapolate on your theory that Ali is a false flag. What, is, <laughs> what does that mean? I, don't know. I think Can you elaborate on that? Because I, I'm very interested. I think it means that uh, I am fake, as in I do not exist. <laughs> yeah, and pretty soon we're going to be like, Missler, what's Missler? Who's Missler? Well, I mean, he clearly doesn't exist, does he? Where is he? Hashtag bring back Miss Love. Hashtag uh, Spanian for PM. Dude, we saw the funniest Spanian video today. Jordan showed this to me. Oh, man, that was amazing. Uh, there's this video... I can't believe people know who Spanian is. All right. There's this video of Spanian. For anybody who doesn't know who he is, he is a prisoner slash junkie that was a lad, but it's really funny knowing that there are now 40-year-old lads. And he was showing his hood, which is the wulo, brah, and he was walking around and going, oi, this is our grocery store. This is where the umbays hang out. Umbay. Just because Ali isn't uh, as versed in pig Latin as me, bums. But isn't that <laughs> such a better way of describing homeless people? I've never heard of a funnier phrase than umbe. Where did that come from? Is that a Lebanese term? What? Uh, umbe, or is that like an Australian term? No, it's a pig Latin. Oh. You know pig Latin? Well, Instead I'm of a- saying Monday, you're like, unde me adlay. Mm. You just get rid of the word the letter at the beginning and put it at the end. It's really not a difficult code to break. (laughs) It's so pathetic that lads think that they're like the guys that invented the Nazi code in World War II Yeah, by coming up with pig Latin. But do you know the... uh, Sorry, uh, continue, but like, do you you know what are the grammatical rules for when you can say... You know how Australian slang has Dave becomes Davo, right? Yes. Uh, serve, service center becomes servo. So when it becomes O and w- and when it becomes E, do you know the... the is there there's any... There's no rule there's there. There's no rule None. there. No. Okay. I because d- I'm I, trying to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so, so it could be anything. Look, you may as well be asking me about, uh, you know... Uh, quantum physics it's it's actually probably uh, more you know you know like when you get to a subatomic level and then things that aren't there are there at the same time and they're also like the same thing is in like 825 places at once the same rule applies when adding an o or a y at the end it's completely random and no one can figure that out and you could probably put the smartest people on earth on that question they would so don't try, Ali. Just she- have some mushroom peels and relax. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue with your Spanian story. <laughs> What's this snacky cave cosplay screen? Man, space is man. All right, look, if you're not going to... Let's do with... Look. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, okay, so it goes like, this is where the umbays hang out. This is where the umbays hang out. And then one of the bums is like, man, fuck off. Don't fucking film this cunt. And then he just goes, what? What was that cunt? And there's footage of him beating up a homeless guy on screen. And people wonder, how did this guy become famous? He's upped bum fights. Dude, bum versus lad. Bum versus lad. And he was really aggressive. Yeah, he was. He, sh- he, he could go to jail for that, right? Like he Probably. Was assaulting the man. <laughs> he was slapping him like it That's was nothing. That's camera now. <laughs> and that Karen in the background would be like, well, what was she saying? Don't. Guys, think about where you are. He was doing it in front of a police station. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, think about where you are. He's like... He, he knows where he is. I don't think he cares. Yeah, he d- really doesn't care. I mean, if you listen to his raps, he does say fuck cops a lot. I don't think he really respects them. Yeah. And I think he kind of likes being in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it weird that they're... It's so strange listening to his stories and him sitting there being like, man, I'll tell you, prison food, best food on earth. Like it's, it's really weird that no matter where you are in life, you go back and you look at it fondly. Isn't that strange? Just being in Lithgow jail and thinking back, being like, ah, those were the days. Have you seen Scandinavian jails? No. 
They're amazing apartments. They're not jails. Well, what's the point? Their point is, well, they say this, that if, you, if you've committed a crime, your freedom is taken away, but nothing else is taken away. Why? I don't know. That's what they believe in. They believe in rehabilitation. So, like, nor prisons in Norway and shit are incredible. Like, you would want to move there. But does it actually reduce recidivism or nah? I don't know the answer to that. I'm guessing that... Well, I, I know that it, it doesn't increase it. It's not like people start killing other people to go to these posh apartments. Really? <laughs> yeah, but I... Because I think about it. I mean, Spanion definitely would. He has done entire videos on how to get a housing commission house. Yeah, well, and housing commission houses are probably a lot worse than these prisons. It's true. But I'm guessing that if, if you're a country that has those posh jails, then maybe being out of that jail is really good too. Because if you're Norwegian, you're already living a sick life. Mm. You've got like, I don't know, their version of Dole is higher and more regular. So even if you don't want to do shit, you could just, be, you could just chill. Isn't that true? Let me look at this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check out this apartment. No, I'm gonna watch Spanian videos. While what live on it. Watch it live. <laughs> so are you looking at the thing? Well, look. Uh, what do I look up? Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian prisons. Prisons. Pull that shit up. You know what? I could probably pull that shit up if you want. Let me see. Yeah, you know what? This reminds me of my accommodation in Korea. It looks exactly yeah, the same. you paid for. And some guy's just sitting in there reading. Yeah, you get everything. You get internet, you get TV. It's like living in a house, except you can't go out of the house. Do something. Don't you reckon it's way better? Oh, man. Look at that. The contrast between Russia and Norway in prisons. Russia's got it right. But then again, that's probably Vladimir Putin's house. Like, it's just a stark, scary place. Yeah. That's probably a lot better than most Russians. Well, what do you think about this? Do you think that someone that goes to prison is not only deprived of freedom, but also needs to be punished? Uh, I know that statistically it doesn't, but... Man... You, you really need to understand that out of the seven deadly sins, mine is wrath. I really do like the idea of revenge. But I, it's purely like the same reason why the death penalty exists in the US, how they say that it doesn't reduce crimes. But they're just kind of like, yeah, but um, it kind of feel nice killing murderers. Yeah, well... <laughs> so I think it's just like that. It's that like, was, yeah, look, I, I logically understand that you should have prisons that are like aim at recidivism. But like, man... The flavor in me want prisons to be based on punishment. I, I think there's gonna be, there there are probably a lot of people that agree with you as well because it, it's it's not a unanimous view that you just deprive them of freedom. A lot of people think that you should suffer there too. You get you, all right. What about this? What about this is a nice little happy medium? How about you combine as always? How Australia is always torn in twain as to whether they should be following Norway or Singapore's model. Combine the both. Have yeah. sick. Norwegian prisons, but also have a small Asian man in there who has trained for 50 years in how to whip an ass. You know how they have professional <laughs> ass whippers in Singapore? <laughs> in Singapore? <laughs> you made a video about that ages ago, which I still think is your best video till date. Well, it's, not, it's just because the material's so good. Isn't it yeah. amazing that somebody gets like a PhD in how to slap your ass? <laughs> well, I'm getting there. Every 200 times I make a mistake, but I'll be ready for that job in no time. Yeah. Because the entire point is that you have to hit the exact same spot over and over again. And you yeah. should be able to do it with your eyes closed. Now, yeah, okay, right. I think that that is the training. But what about that for everybody? They get to live in that apartment, but their ass gets beaten so much that they can't sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, they definitely wouldn't be able to sit down even if their ass gets hit beaten even a little bit yeah it hurts those whips are insane those whips aren't like it, it, you it rips apart your skin how many uh ass whips do you get sentenced to 
Depends what the crime is, I suppose. 40 is a really, really common Maybe number. 40, all right. Well, what about... Because I'd imagine that getting whipped on the ass wouldn't kill you. Don't you think that actually whipping someone's ass like 400 times from a professional ass whipper would be a more deterring punishment than getting executed? It's more pain than you would experience getting electrocuted 400 times over. I don't think you're going to kill anyone again. And you say while they're on the ground afterwards, and the next time you do it, it's 800. I suppose you're right. No, no, you're not right. What are you talking about? I get the ass whooping. What? Getting killed or getting 400. Getting beheaded or like getting electrocuted is way worse than having an ass that hurts for a few days. But... Don't you think about, from a professional ass whipper, about seven whips in, you'd be thinking, man, I wish I took death. And you've got another 393 to go. Yeah, but four weeks later, you change your mind again, I think. (laughs) (laughs) When it heals and you're still alive and you're just chilling, eating, I don't know, zinger box, and you're like, you know what? I think that was the right call. All right, look. Um, we do have to get out of here. We do have to get out of here, but we since we only did I don't know an hour of podcast. Yeah. Do you want to do one last segment, which will be really really quickly? What is it? Uh, it is um, the Aged Care Commission says that we are paying uh, aged care staff less than um, uh, cleaners, and that is possibly one of the reasons why the aged care. Uh, um, sector is in shambles. Yeah, well, it's also because I think they've gotten confused because, let's be honest, isn't an aged care worker a cleaner? How much shit would they have to clean up? Yeah, that, but wouldn't it be like a lot of other shit too, like managing their diets and, uh, you know, hitting them every now and then when no one's looking? <laughs> 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 I don't know what it is. So that's, a, well, that's the whole thing then, right? Like, you, you have the initial training... Go to Singapore, learn to be a professional ass whipper. You know how to hit old people. Well, there you go. go. There is no way we're going to come up with anything <laughs> substantive today. Today's podcast has been shambles. <laughs> and I'm glad. It's not even our fault. Well, look, part of it is, yeah, look, sorry about the, the technical issues. Hopefully we'll come bigger and stronger and still without Miss Love because Miss Love has been fired by uh, Jordan. Yes, that's true. Look, uh, when, when it comes to old people and aged care workers, yeah, that's... That's uh, that's not right. But what do you expect with a liberal government? There you go. Go buy a shirt, kids. Go sign up to the Patreon where you get more content exclusively. And if you think this is aimless, man, you haven't listened to Up Late. <laughs> Look, if you just after watching today's podcast, you decide not to become a patron, I understand that too. Bring back Miss Love. Well, where were you last week? No, he's not coming back. All right, we'll see you guys later. Uh, hopefully next week will be technical issues free and we can stick to our agenda. See you guys. Bye-bye. Wait, sorry.